is Lightning 100. All right, we are one minute away from officially actually uh, hitting 222-22 here on 222-22. And I, I just can't think of anyone more cosmic to bring into the Volume.com studio than Steve Poltz. Steve, how are you, buddy? Man, I'm so honored that you chose me to be the freak that you brought in for this weird moment. <laughs> well, you know, I, I remember 11-11 at 11-11 a.m., which uh, I, I had a daughter born on 11-11, so that, that oh. number's kind of always, you know, been in, in the head a little bit. She was born 11 minutes after 11.30 on the 11th day of the 11th month, and now there's probably a kid being born right now here on 2 22 22 <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're never going to have this date again, are we? No, this this is it, man. I mean, you know, it was it was fun when it was February 2nd, but I was like, well, 20 days. And so, and until we get to see Steve Poltz at City Winery in Nashville tonight, two artists, a good friend of yours, Crystal Bowersox, is going to be opening the show. Yes, I love Crystal Bowersox. So she goes on first right at uh, 8 o'clock at City Winery. And this is my record release party. I put out a new record called Stardust and Satellites. And I couldn't think of a better place to do it than on 222.22 and to talk about it at 222. <laughs> on 222.22. I at love it. And we're in two places. We're on the radio and we're on volume.com. You can actually watch and, uh, and, and look at Steve and I. I would look more at Steve than myself personally. Uh, but uh, but that's that's just me because I'm a big fan of a big fan of Steve. I mean, <laughs> you've been to the radio station. What's what's crazy is each year as it as it goes by, it means there's another year that's gone by. We've been in this space for 17 years. This is our 17th year here. Uh, and before that, we were on the 30th floor of the LNC Tower. And that's when I first met you. You came in. It, it would have been close to when. Uh, the, the guy messed up the, the game for the Cubs. Because uh, I remember you, you sung this little song and you dropped in this little nugget. Oh, yeah. What was that guy's name? Man. That, that's forget now. a good trivia question. There you, well, you Bartman. Know, Bartman. Steve Bartman. There you go. See? Why all. do I know this? Uh, you There's a lot of things in your head. Yeah. Steve. <laughs> I can't even believe I just pulled that. I did not look it up for those of you out there that are driving in your cars right now and you're wondering, did he really do that or did he look it up on this phone? And no, I did not look it up on my phone. As a matter of fact, if you are driving in your car, I'm in your car with you right now because I'm everywhere at once. I'm like Santa Claus. I'm inside your brain right now while you're driving. You're thinking, <laughs> should I pull over there and get a coffee right now? Do I need a nice shot of espresso or should I stay listening to Steve Pultz? And I'm making you stay and listen to Steve Pultz I on 222.22. I'm I'm so grateful that that you've come in here to uh, to hang out with us and and we're hanging out in people's cars right now, uh, and and the new record you did it here in Nashville with some uh, some great friends of the radio station as well Oliver Wood and Jano Ricks uh, from the Wood Brothers who have a studio pretty close to our our radio station actually they do and you know I was going into your station when it was up in that building. And I remember, because I came in once right after a tornado came and blew out the windows. Remember that? Yeah. And my friend Jane was a DJ there, and I had met her in Vermont years ago when she worked at a different station in, like, Rutland or somewhere, <laughs> Vermont. Killington, Vermont. There was a little station she worked at, so... Yeah, and I've known you guys for a long time, it's a and good. it's cool. You've played my records, and allowed me to traipse around your studio, and I get to be here now. Well, and, and today uh, we've got a can of pop in heavy rotation. It's my DJ pick of the week as uh, we're getting ready for the show tonight at City Winery Nashville. And when we play that again here, we're going to give you a chance to call in and win tickets to the show. But first, uh, Steve is, is going to play a couple songs for us. I mean, I don't know if you should play two songs today, but uh, you can play as many as you <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as we have time for. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you want to play first? This is how the record starts off. So I have this new record that just came out. It's called Stardust and Satellites. And you can get it on vinyl tonight at City Winery. It's pink vinyl, which is really beautiful pink vinyl. And uh, it's on all the streaming services everywhere. And this is how the record opens up. And this is called Wrong Town. to watch a show starring me I don't know what you're about to hear or see The truth is I have no plan at all There's a good chance that off this stage I'll fall My body ain't quite what it used to be My hair ain't the color it once was My style icon is Emmy Lou Harris Mixed with a little Don was 
I lie on stage, I lie in songs, I lay my troubles down. Hey, stick it out with me, kid. I mean, what else is there to do? In this godforsaken, deep fried bacon town. Yeah, you bought the tickets, you paid the cash, you got in the car, you moved your ass. You brought a friend or an awkward date to something you love that they're probably gonna hate. It's music, sweet music. I'm emo, I'm screamo, I'm country, and I'm folk Americana. If you wanna, I'm old fashioned, but I'm woke. I'm everything to everyone, I'm Jesus, and I'm Buddha too. Don't panic, I'm organic, I'm too scared to be satanic. But mostly, I'm just here to sing. For you. Well, I played a lot of shows across this world, but tonight's the best I'll ever play. I'm handing you a pearl. My G string might snap in two. My face might turn from red to white to blue. But it's not because I'm dying. Hey, I'm just patriotic. Will we all connect like Legos? Yeah, we all are symbiotic. I die on stage, I die on songs, I try to work it out. Hey, stick it out with me, kid. I mean, what else is there to do? And this craft beer making, earthquake shaking town. Yeah, you bought the tickets, you paid the cash, you got in the car, you moved your ass. You brought a friend or an awkward date to some you love that they're definitely gonna hate. It's music, sweet music. I'm emo, I'm screamo, I'm grateful, dead post stroke. Americana, if you want, I'm old fashioned, but I'm broke. I'm everything to everyone, I'm Jesus and I'm Buddha too. Don't panic, I'm organic, I'm too scared to be satanic. But mostly I'm just here to sing for you. you're thinking what the hell this guy just wrote a whole entire song about himself and the truth is i do it all the time well for me it's therapeutic and i hope that you don't mind well i probably owe you money because you're my therapist but i'm kind of like your escort away from all of this I cry on stage, I cry on songs, I try to work it out. Hey, stick it out with me, kid, I mean, what else is there to do? And this hemp clothes making, tincture taking, sourdough baking, late day waking, spare change taking, traffic making, release the craking. I must be mistaken, I'm in the wrong town. Lightning 100, the one and only Steve (laughs) Poltz. That is uh, how the record starts. Stardust and Satellites this evening doing the album release show at City Winery Nashville. Special guest Crystal Bauer Socks. Doors are at 6. Show is at 8. And uh, right now, we are live on Lightning 100 and Volume.com. We'll give away a pair of tickets before we let Steve out of the studio today. Uh, yeah, when you sing when you sing your songs live, they, they change, they morph a little bit uh, to the moment, don't they? Oh, yeah, they always do. It's like, I always picture them like tortillas. If you nail a package of tortillas to your wall, which I did in college, and they're wrapped in saran wrap, they slowly mold, and I used to call it ever-changing art. (laughs) And each day I'd come home, they'd be a little more green with a neat map on the tortillas. So yeah, my songs are like moldy tortillas. (laughs) That's, That's how my bio should lead off. That should be the pull quote. Well, I'm I'm glad that they were able to uh, to to get catch a couple of them and you know put them in the formaldehyde so they don't change it all and and put them on the record uh, and, and <laughs> you, you, you did that here in Nashville with Oliver Wood and John O'Ricks, uh, both of the Wood brothers. But uh, was Chris Wood was your neighbor at some point? Where where was that house? Yeah, so Chris Wood, I live over there in Lachlan Springs in East Nashville, and Chris Wood lived about four houses down from me, right near my other friend um, Langhorn Slim. And, uh, and right near Scott Sachs. It's like all these musicians are around there. And so I would go on walks with uh, Chris Wood during the pandemic, and we would walk around and check everything out. And you know, the, there had been that tornado a couple of years ago, and I remember I had just come off of the road and that tornado hit, and I was out at the mailbox, and it just felt really weird. And I was looking at my mail, and I went, and my phone started beeping, you are in the path of a tornado. So somebody's fence blew right into my garage and it wiped out the golf course. Shelby 
Shelby golf course right there. And so that just sort of became this ad hoc park and people would bring their dogs and throw frisbees and all these hippies were hanging out on the park right by where I live. I was one of them and we would go on walks and I would walk with Chris Wood who was in Modesky, Martin and Wood and also in the Wood Brothers and we would discuss films. That's what we like to talk about, films and what's our favorite film ever. Oh, and, wow. And so we would do that and then... Oliver Wood had me over for dinner, and then he said, just like a drug dealer that comes to an area where everybody's hanging out and goes, the first one's free. Oliver Wood said, come into the studio, the first one's free. And then I was hooked. I was, I was going to need a 12-step program when I was done recording that record because I just kept writing songs, and that's how the record got recorded, and now it's out. That record is out. As it is out there in the world. I was enjoying it this morning. Is Frenemy the first song you guys recorded? Frenemy is the first song we recorded at the studio. And the only reason is, is I pulled my guitar out of the case. And I was telling you earlier, Dan, when I came in that I had my one guitar and this G string was broken as they're wont to do. Those G strings are pesky. And so I pulled out my guitar and it was tuned in some weird tuning. I think it was C G C G C G E. And so I knew I had written a song in that tuning and it was called Frenemy. So that was the first song we recorded wow. for that record. Um, I would play it right now, but I'd have to get into that tuning. That sounds so awesome. it's it would be like a hassle. Like heads could roll if I screw up. But <laughs> That was the first song we recorded, and yeah, I had such a cool time making that record. Uh, I really didn't want to leave, and Nashville is such a fertile place to make records. Like, I don't know why anybody would live anywhere else. The whole world should live in Nashville, because everywhere you go, people are creating art, and they're creating videos, and they're taking photos, and... You know, t it, t it takes a lot to pull you away from the beaches of San Diego. Yeah, I was living right on the ocean. That wasn't easy to do. I was living right at a beach called Windensea, and Windensea is one word: W I N D A N S E A. It looks cool, Windensea. <laughs> and there was a cool break I used to like to surf. That was just a little north of where I lived, and I could walk up to it. And the break was called Little Point. And if you're goofy foot like me, meaning like if you're on a skateboard, that means your right foot's ahead of your left foot. That's called goofy foot then you want to wave that brakes to the left because you're you're facing it if you know what i mean rather than going to your backside and you're surfing that wave and it feels so good <laughs> but no i gave it all up to move to nashville because you know nashville's got its own waves and 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 you've made a lot you've made a lot of friends i, I saw aaron lee tazjan do do a post about uh, doing some shows with you guys yeah aaron just opened my shows at the belly up uh in san diego i just played there friday and then i had oliver wood and um, also Lindsay lou were guests uh the second night yeah so i've been fortunate to write songs with some cool luminaries here like molly tuttle and sierra hole and billy strings and um to make this record with the wood brothers and hang out with i mean everywhere you go there's just like something is happening like somebody's doing something like yeah i just walk up to ugly mugs or something and there's like a music attorney there talking about something i'm talking to or a, a festival programmer or a photographer or somebody's making clothing you know this is this is such a beautiful place to live how about the thing that's happening with billy strings right now that guy is like on his way to another planet yeah amazing. he tapped into something and it worked and a lot of it happened during during the pandemic, um, I watched him start playing all those drive-ins and um, playing all these other shows, and it was just beautiful to see it happen. And I just love him. Yeah. I love being around him. I love his energy and his band. Holy crap, that band's good. And so, you know, like, he has this record out right now, and we ha I have a song on it. It's the final track on the record, and it's called Leaders, and... That one, he texted me the lyrics to it, and I put the music to it, and I didn't change any of the lyrics, and he didn't change any of the music. It was kind of a cool way to write a song, because when we wrote before, we were in the same room, but this one, he just said, hey, here's something I spit out today, see if you could put music to it. So I did, 
And that was a really fun experience, too. There's so many different ways to write songs. Like, you could be at home listening to this right now and think maybe one of us said something, you could turn it into a song. I'll give you a songwriting assignment if you're out there right now. How about Raining Gravel? Throw <laughs> Raining Gravel into a song. And all we need are deadlines because see what happens is in our bodies, we have these neural pathways, and you have three muscles. You have your songwriting muscle, you have your performance muscle, and your recording muscle. And you don't want those to atrophy, so you want to give them all a workout so your songwriting muscle you need to work at that all the time a lot of people think you have to wait for inspiration but no what you need are deadlines think about new york times writers who are some of your favorite op-ed writers let's talk about okay <laughs> paul krugman yeah he won the uh, nobel prize for economics or let's talk about gil collins or maureen dowd or somebody like that or david brooks if you want a more conservative viewpoint these people have columns due and they have to do it you think they wait for inspiration no they have <laughs> deadlines my friend bob schneider in austin texas came up with this song songwriting game back in the 90s we started doing it so your neural pathways open up so i just gave you a songwriting assignment it's called raining gravel so now you have a deadline you have a week to write raining gravel and get a group of your other friends and email them it on a little mp3 you just record it on your phone and then you go wow i can finish songs now i gotta go in and record it because what we are as musicians we're everything we're the factory we're making the widgets we have to create the widgets we're the marketing team we have to go out on the road and sell it and so that works on your performance muscle as well. You don't want that to atrophy, nor do you want your rec recording muscle to atrophy. What did you say that uh, on this Stardust and Satellites record that you had less of a deadline than usual? It's a little, little actually more time for you to, to work on this one. Yeah, I had a lot of songs that I was writing and what happens is all of a sudden, I don't ever overthink it. It's not like I make up a list of studios or producers. What happened, I went to dinner with Oliver Wood, and he just coaxed me into coming into his studio. So this record could have been done a thousand different ways. That's the thing when you make a record. It depends who's producing it, who's playing on it. The songs can turn out totally different. But I just go by instinct and what feels right. Like uh, the last two weeks, I've been writing songs with my friend Jim Lauderdale. And we've written about 15. And my next goal is to do a duo record with Jim. So I'm already thinking about the next one, but um, I don't know where I would make it yet, but I know the songs keep coming out of me, and as long as they're there, I'm going to keep writing them down, and then hopefully Lieutenant Dan, you'll let me come in here to come Lightning in here. 100 and yeah. sing them. Let's do it. Alright, well while while we got Steve Poltz here, we got to have him do uh, do two songs here because it's it's 222. Uh, 22, 22, 22. This and is good weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tonight, Steve Poltz is going to be one of two artists playing at City Winery in Nashville. Crystal Bauer Sox is going to open the show at 8 o'clock. She's so good. For Steve. And uh, we're going to give away tickets. We're going to play Can of Pop from the record because it sounds a little bit different than if uh, Steve was in here playing it solo acoustic on his uh, on his Taylor. Have you named this Taylor yet? This is a Yes. The name of this new Taylor that was given to me, it, its name is the Washington Football Club. <laughs> okay, all right. And I think they just renamed that. Did they just rename so maybe you might have to keep keep rolling with that. I don't know. But Well, yeah, they just renamed themselves the Washington somethings. Yes, there we go. The um I've generals or something or something like that. Yes, yes. Anyway, so I figured since their name opened up, I took it. Okay. Oh, because oh, see, I that's see. why I did it. I Got named it. it the Washington Football Club because they weren't using. it That was it available anymore. all of a sudden. Yeah, I was Are... going to name it Mandolin Orange. Okay. Because that wasn't being You're used right. anymore either. That's yes. Watch House. But then I decided I would just go with the Washington Football Club because it's a longer name and it'll be funny when people ask, "What's the name of your guitar?" Because <laughs> my other one's Smokey Joe, but this is the Washington <laughs> Football Club because it was available. And I don't think they can sue me anymore for it. You never know what you're going to get with Steve Poltz in the Volume.com studio right now here at Lightning 100. Do you want to do another one from the new record, or what do you want to play? I would love to do another new one from the record. Thank you for even inviting me in here. This one's called Conveyor Belt. So if you're at home or you're driving around in your car or you're listening to this online, um, you know how painful it is to lose somebody, and I know how that is too. And I lost my dad um, during <clears throat> the last year, and... You would have loved him. My dad made it all the way to 90 years old, and his mind was intact, and his health was good up till the end. And I got to be with him uh, when he passed away, and that was such a good gift to be with him. And I miss him, and I think about him a lot, but I have this friend who's a photographer. His name's Henry Diltz, and he shot the album cover of Sweet Baby James, Crosby, Stills, and Nash when they're on that couch, Joni Mitchell Blue. 
bunch of Neil Young album covers. And when somebody dies, Henry Diltz always says, Good for him. He's graduated. He's floating above. He's got his wings. And so that's why I like to look at my dad passing away. It was a beautiful thing. And so uh, I asked him to leave me a message if there was anything on the other side. And he said, what do you want it to be? And I said, Indian Joe. And sure enough, I got a message from Indian Joe through an old newspaper article. I couldn't believe it. And so he always used to say a word, Bahutensy, when he'd cough. Bahutensy. And I said, what does it mean, Dad? He said, it means many blessings. Let's go nuts. So this is track number two on the new record, Stardust and Satellites. And the name of this is Conveyor Belt. You're listening to Steve Poltz on Lightning 100. We are all on a conveyor belt In a factory on the wheel of time Yet we don't know when our cart clocks out It was yesterday we were in our prime Make Mac, click, clack Don't even think about looking back Kodak soundtrack I remember when my ma had a heart attack We are all on a conveyor belt In a factory on the wheel of time Yet we don't know when a cart clocks out It was yesterday At the top of the tree, my love's got a money back guarantee. I'm living now in Tennessee, but I still scream Bahutensy. Hey, let's go join the Jubilee. Don't let the time run out on me. My mom and dad have gone to sea. In a factory on the wheel of time Yeah, we don't know when our cart clocks out It was yesterday we were in our prime We are all on the conveyor belt In a factory on the wheel of time Yeah, we don't know when our cart clocks out It was yesterday we were in our prime Seems like yesterday we were in our prime Lightning 100, Steve Poltz live in the Volume.com studio. It's tonight. He's going to headline City Winery in Nashville. Special guest Crystal Bauer socks getting underway at 8 Doors are at 6 o'clock. That's the album release show for Stardust and Satellites. And uh, we do get to give away a pair of uh, tickets. We're going to do that when we play Can of Pop here in uh, in just a bit. Beautiful version of that song, Steve. Thank you. Uh, and and so so nice to get you here in the studio on 2 22 We did it. We did do it. Uh, and and uh, so I was like, I was thinking about uh, things that are better together, twos. And I figured you'd be pretty good at, at thinking about this, like peanut butter and jelly. Yes. Be, you know, better together. Uh, oil and vinegar, actually. Good in a good in a salad there, right? Almond uh, butter and oatmeal. Al- almond butter and oat macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Uh, chopsticks. They're they're better together. It's a little hard. Cinnamon and toast. Cinnamon and toast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sugar and Kool Aid. Sugar and Kool Aid. Yeah. You know, without the sugar, man, it's just. 
pee and poop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How's like, that? Probably time to go ahead and take caller number two. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest show I've ever been on. It's all downhill from here. 615-777-5100. Uh, Steve, y- you are welcome. You really are welcome in any time. Just, just pop in. Just watch. You in. know what's not welcome? <laughs> the stupid designator hitter rule to the National League. I'm so mad at Manfred and that dumb vote they just made. My my National League Padres. I pitchers need to hit. Quit protecting these pitchers. It's dumb. Sorry, I just had to let that. It's all right. Yeah. I imagine you might talk about that when you play. It's baseball season tonight at the show. Hey, good call. <laughs> all right. They're just giving me a thought. All right, it's a strike. Uh, if you want to try and be caller number two, we can get you two tickets into the show tonight at City Winery Nashville. Steve.